Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel and in today's video I'm going to give you a summary of the most common faults with P3 Volvos. Now my channel is about chronicling basically any issues that arise during my ownership of the cars, um, giving you guys advice and tips on how to look after these cars and keep them running forever. But um, it would be amiss of me to actually create a full sort of summary video on the common issues that these cars have. Now I'm only going to be able to touch on a few of them in this video and I might have to do a second video covering more if you guys suggest more but these are the ones that I've come across or that are most common on sort of the forums that people have come across as well. So let's get straight into it. Now this one um, is purely cosmetic to start off with and that is the fact that the Volvo badge comes off the front um if you go on also trader now you'll have to excuse the state of the car we're mid-working week so i haven't had a chance to wash it but um most of the cars on auto trader from the same time as this um p3 generation are missing this volvo badge here because basically it just comes off water gets behind it you can actually see that mine is starting to uh, but i did super glue it so it should stay um and it just makes these cars look really tatty and it's a bit of an oversight by Volvo the fact that the one thing that tells you it's a Volvo which is the badge on the front comes off uh, which is a bit of a fail on Volvo's behalf but uh, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt won't we so um, next thing then is going to be regarding the engine and I think we should probably lift the engine um, even though we're not going to point at anything specifically just helps to um, prove my point okay let's talk about these engines then so one of the uh, issues that's really well documented on forums with the d5 engine is swell flap issues now i have not experienced these in my car uh, but to be honest i haven't checked them but essentially what they are are little valves within cylinders that um literally do what they they say they do um they create a swirling effect within the cylinder to create a sort of more low down punch um, and torque now what you can buy delete kits um, to get rid of these completely but it will sort of impact on fuel economy and make things a little bit weird in the engine cars don't tend to like it um, you can also buy repair kits but what happens is, is these get clogged they break off and they can actually fall um, into your engine causing damage now this is quite rare in these volvos but it's definitely something you want to keep an eye on and sort of prevent if you can uh, by either replacing them or getting a carbon clean or something like that just to prevent these issues occurring second one is egr valves and uh, now these get clogged on all diesels um it's not specific to volvo however on a volvo it's expensive so you can either get it cleaned um which is probably a couple of hundred quid or you can get it replaced which is probably going to be knocking on a thousand pounds plus labor so it's definitely worth trying to prevent that and you can prevent that by using good quality fuel um the van's just stalled over there nice one um good quality fuel uh changing fuel filters regularly on on the sort of the button um and just yeah maintaining your car well crap oil um or long oil that's been in a long time won't help um and yeah just just staying on top of the car and trying to keep it clean you can also use diesel additives um, such as red x and things like that to uh, reduce the carbon build up within the engine that will help as well um but it's sort of a an inevitable issue that may arise um with modern diesels nowadays um moving on again with modern diesels dpfs now the euro 3 cars which are pre-2005 i believe um didn't come with dpfs and therefore don't have these issues however anything after that do come with dpfs um obviously all of these p3 diesels do come with dpfs and it's a diesel particulate filter literally filters out diesel particulates and what it does every now and then um, when you when you meet a certain criteria um, it will uh, chuck extra fuel into the cylinders um, to create uh, heat to burn off the, the soot that it catches um, and clear itself now if you don't meet these certain criteria which is driving at a speed of about 80 kilometers for 25 minutes while the car's at full operating temperature uh, i.e if you drive around town a lot or do, do short journeys you will block your dpf uh, which again is expensive to replace if you have to have one um, again you're probably looking around 
two thousand no probably a thousand pounds um from volvo directly uh, so not a cheap part to get um you can also have them cleaned manually as well which is a couple of hundred quid um, but i would recommend just driving uh, your car on a long journey every now and then take it up the motorway cruise for half an hour uh, at 70 and you should be fine do that probably at least once a month i would say um, and you should be fine it should clear the dpf nicely now if you have issues with glow plugs on your car you will struggle to um, clear your dpf and it will sort of be a persistent issue that can arise so if you've got glow plug issues don't ignore them try and get them replaced as well now one final thing with the engine and obviously this is just a, a very quick rundown there are plenty more issues that can arise from these engines is uh, oil seepage from the turbo return line uh, oil return line now this is not a major issue um, but something i thought i'd point out as i can see it on this car but you'll see that this rear um intake pipe is covered in oil and what this is basically on these twin turbo cars the turbo oil feed um return it just seeps a bit of oil every now and then it will stick itself and create a bit of an oily mess at the back of this engine keep an eye check your oil regularly um to see if it gets worse or not um it doesn't tend to it hasn't on this car touch wood um but definitely something to consider um looking at you could probably use it to get a bit of money off the car as well when if you're looking to use one looking to buy one used um every little helps doesn't it so yeah you can just see it uh, down in here and just to prove it i'll got a lovely clean finger here and now it's oily and it just is on this bracket down here um, a bit further now initially when i saw this i did think it was coming out of the side of the engine block which obviously it wouldn't be great but um now after a bit of research it's from the turbo itself doesn't mean that your turbo is on its way out but um it's definitely something to look at make sure that it doesn't get too bad and like i said check your oil regularly uh, to ensure it doesn't now moving on to the body so um this is perhaps volvo's biggest faux pas in the design of this car and that was the fact that they failed to bond in the windscreen correctly so so many p3s have massive water leak issues if you go to see a p3 volvo that has um damp inside or fogs up or you find perhaps a dehumidifier or a water absorber like i've got in here then um you might want to consider giving it a miss um and now although i've had it on my car fortunately i caught it early enough that it wasn't a major issue but essentially what happened was volvo didn't seal the top of the windscreen water drips in um makes your floor mats wet so that's a that's an easy way to tell if your floor mats are wet either side or if you're buying a car check if the floor mats are wet try and go to see one after it's rained which i know they tell you not to do but it's a really good way of telling um whether these cars are good or not this causes a bit of premature rust um in these a pillars which you might just be able to see a tiny bit of bubbling there um you can see down in here because essentially the water gets sits in here um and yeah it's just an absolute nightmare so i took my car back to volvo uk because it is a known issue and i a few followers from canada and places like that had had them replaced free of charge took it back to volvo um they they went to replace it broke the windscreen then said they were going to charge me for the new windscreen um, unfortunately we managed to work it out why i didn't have to pay uh, but they also broke uh, the two windscreen strips as well because of the rust inside of there so fortunately volvo um came good in the end um and agreed to fit the bill but um yeah wasn't really a pleasant experience and had i not caught it in time um this water goes sits in the back of the dashboard destroys uh, your computer's in the back here, destroys your head unit, destroys your sat-nav, could destroy your instrument cluster, and it's just a massive headache if it goes wrong. So um, definitely be sure to check that out. Now, the second thing with the body is these mirrors. Now, as you can see, 
This one um, is a little floppy. Now, I don't know what the previous owner did to it, but, um, yeah, it's a bit annoying. Um, at speed, it can sometimes rattle. Now, it has improved since I've dismantled it and put it back together. But also, with the folding mechanism, they tend to get stuck, um, so they require lubricating. Uh, just pop the glass off, uh, spray a bit of lubricant in there, and it tends to keep it working nicely. Also, the glass itself um, detaches itself from the mirror, um, so the glass will fall out. And as you can see, I've glued mine back in rather than buying a new glass so that's something to consider with the mirrors wheels um, as you can see these wheels are in absolute state but um, they're also dying from the middle as well um, which is a bit odd uh, and I've never had that on any other car but um, these wheels are known to go porous, uh, which essentially means that they start to let air out. Um, they corrode in, in such a way that the air starts to seep out of the tyre. Fortunately, I haven't had that on these so far, but as you can see, these are fairly tired looking wheels, um, definitely in need of a res restoration, which is coming. Uh, I just haven't got round to it. But um, yeah, you can just see, look, this, this coating is just peeling off. Um, which from a car that costs over 50 grand new uh, back in 2009 uh, which was a lot of money back then um, it's not that great is it within 10 years so consider that as well now something that happened on the history of my car uh, that I found was the fact that the exhaust started to fall off um, at around 60,000 miles so check that because um, I'm not sure if that's a common issue or not but definitely something to consider Apart from that, though, these, these cars, body-wise, are fantastic. They don't tend to rust um, unless there's issues such as the water seepage and everything like that. They are nice, robust cars. Um, the sort of little niggles that Volvo have created uh, are all sort of created through the manufacturing process, and a lot of them are sorted out by warranty, but you just want to make sure they are. Um, but, uh, yeah, apart from that, let's get on to suspension now um so suspension you all, you all know what i'm going to talk about if you've watched the channel before rear shock absorbers on this car are very expensive this car unfortunately for me falls into a gap of cars where they used a self-leveling rear shock absorber uh it was for one model year between 2009 and 2010 and it's 550 pounds per rear shock absorber so um yeah, very expensive. I've already replaced one and now the other one's starting to fail. So it's going to be £1,100 within 12 months um, of each other. So not cheap, but um, realistically not too bad in terms of BMW costs because um, they can cost a lot more. Now, if you have the adaptive 4C suspension, then fortunately for you, there are people who remake them uh, there are people who build conversion kits as well um, so that's something you can definitely consider doing don't be too scared of a 4c suspension car just budget around sort of five or six hundred pounds in the near future to get it replaced if it goes wrong um, it's definitely something i would do anyway um, that's pretty much it ball joints this is a big heavy car it likes to go through ball joints and bushings at the front with a big heavy sort of five cylinder diesel engine to check that out as well um but yeah apart from that the suspension on these cars is fairly stout um you've got standard front shock absorbers uh, so they're not expensive really to change and you can fairly easily do them yourself as you can with the rear shock absorbers as well the only thing is to consider is that the shock absorbers sit separately to the springs uh, which makes them nice and easy to change um which is yeah very very nice indeed so let's move on to the interior of the cars now um these memory seats are fairly robust and work uh, for a very long time without issue. We do have a bit of wear on the car here. This is nearly a 100,000 mile car though, um, and the leather is worn fairly well. Uh, there are, um, Volvo leather can become quite tired if it's not looked after like this. Um, so make sure that you've had one, you've got one without all these creases um, and wear on. I would definitely recommend um, if you or once you have one or if you own one treating this leather regularly as well um, because it just makes um, a massive difference to the look of the interior and the life of the interior as well now this is an art design model hence why you get the nice blue gauges um, and these instrument clusters are fairly uh, robust you don't have any issues with them at all same as the head unit, same as the navigation here. Um, although 
it's a bit rubbish the navigation system uh, nowadays but uh, nevertheless not too bad at all now with the starting mechanism they have been known to fail where the key gets stuck um, or the key fails to start the car again this is fairly rare um, but something to consider I think it's about 150 pounds for a new sort of key switch in here so that's not too bad to replace if it does fail the biggest thing on the interior is your blower motor um, now the blower motor obviously blows out the air from behind the dashboard if that fails it's very expensive because it requires a lot of the dashboard to be removed um, and yeah will cost you about 1500 pounds from a volvo main dealer because the part itself is also expensive so consider that i will show you in a separate video uh, probably the one straight after this why um how to tell if your blower motor is failing um so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a like um so i'll so you don't miss this um upcoming video but uh yeah fairly um robust interior apart from windows now the window switches and the window uh, regulators window motors um are all fairly um it's as if they're made of chocolate in this car um they fa they they quite often fail um which is a bit of a nightmare uh, they quite often unprogram themselves so suddenly the automatic stuff stops working which is dead easy to do it's dead easy to uh reprogram them but just bear it in mind um if you've got a car at a dealership that you're going to see or if your car is starting to go quite slowly when the windows go down um and slowly when they come up and they sort of you can hear the, the motor working that's a sign that your motors are a bit tired um and just be careful that you don't get caught with your window stuck down um, and that's the same on all four windows but mainly the driver's side tends to fail most often because obviously it's the one that's open most now finally, the transmission in these cars, ASIN uh, TF80SC. Give it a Google and you'll see that it's a fairly robust transmission. The only thing I would advise is the fact that Volvo claim that it's uh, sealed for life and doesn't ever need a transmission fluid change. Now this was used in Chrysler products, Dodge products, and they recommend changing it um, every sort of 50 to 80,000 miles. So yeah, that's what you need to do. Um, if you have a high mileage car, say 150 plus, 150,000 miles plus, and this hasn't been changed, I would be very wary of um, it. Um, definitely check to see if it has been changed. And if it hasn't, perhaps I would advise walking away uh, just because these transmissions can be quite expensive. They could be rebuilt for about £1,500 um, with various sort of... Uh, transmission specialists but you'd rather not have to do that wouldn't you so um yeah check to see if it's been done in terms of manuals uh check to see if your flywheel's been done if it's a higher mileage car because that can be expensive as well as the clutch itself but um overall yeah these cars are lovely they are fantastic to drive fantastic to own and um yeah i hope you guys when you buy one or if you own one really really have many miles of um enjoyment from it so uh yeah let me know in the description uh, the comments below if i've missed anything in particular obviously if you're a returning subscriber let me know if i haven't covered any of these before in the video if you've learned anything uh go out and have a look at all of these things on your car i would advise it because a lot of the stuff you don't notice until you actually test it um so definitely check that the main one sort of with that is the the oil at the back of the engine um loads of people come back to me and say oh yeah i've got the same thing um but uh yeah thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video cheers